and gentlemen of the press. We have called you this morning to share with you a few thoughts about the conference of major superiors religious Ghana. It is our hope that through you our message will reach far and near. So this is a communique issued by the Conference of Major Superiors of Religious Ghana at the end of its biannual conference held at the Anoyansin Spirituality Center, Botiano Hills, from March 11 to March the 15th, 2024. Greetings. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14. Preamble. We members of the Conference of Major Superiors of Religious Ghana held our first biannual meeting for the year 2024 at the Anoyansin Spirituality Center, Botiano Hills, in the greater Accra region of Ghana, from March 11 to the 15th of 2024. We deliberated on consecrated life and collaborative ministry in the local church. A team inspired by the call of the Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference at their last plenary meeting in Sunyane on fostering the growth of the church in Ghana through collaborative ministry. As consecrated men and women, we take this call of the bishops seriously and view it as a challenge to live out our prophetic role in the church and in society. We would like, therefore, to share the fruits of our reflections at the end of the session with you, our beloved brothers and sisters in consecrated life, the Catholic faithful, as well as men and women of goodwill. Who we are. The Conference of Major Superiors of Religious Ghana is the umbrella body of leaders designated as major superiors of men and women congregations in Ghana. The religious are by identity men and women who, obedient to the Father's call and the prompting of the Holy Spirit, have chosen this special, special way of following Christ, chaste, poor, and obedient, in order to devote themselves to Him with an undivided heart. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 34. Like the apostles, we too have left everything behind in order to be with Christ and to put ourselves as he did at the service of God and of our brothers and sisters. In this way, through the many charisms of spiritual and apostolic life bestowed on them by the Holy Spirit, they help make the mystery and mission of the church shine forth and in doing so, contribute to the renewal of society. This is from St. Pope John Paul II. The Catholic Church in Ghana owes its existence to the pioneer work of the members of these congregations, those we usually call missionaries. Many of the Catholic institutions, like schools and hospitals, were established by and or managed by these religious. You find our members, whether religious priests, religious sisters, or religious brothers, in their various habits, involved in various social intervention projects of the Catholic Church in the areas of education, health, socio-pastoral, ministry to the poor and marginalized, justice and peace and integrity of creation issues, women empowerment, 
get child education, save child advocacy, and fight against human trafficking and many others. As consecrated persons, the life we live in the body, we live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. The Jubilee year 2025, a prophetic moment of hope. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has launched the journey towards the celebration of the Jubilee year 2025 under the team Programs of Hope, and is inviting all to make this year, 2024, a symphony of prayer in preparation for the Jubilee year celebration in 2025. A Jubilee year is a sacred year celebrated every 25 years as a year of God's favor, as written in the book of prophet Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1 to 4, and proclaimed by Jesus in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19. It is a moment of grace, a curious moment of restoration and reconciliation, Leviticus chapter 25, verse 8 to 17. It is also a prophetic moment during which everyone is called to listen to the voice of the Lord and witness to the gospel values of justice, reconciliation, peace, and solidarity. The theme of Pilgrims of Hope invites us to live out the adventurous virtues of the pilgrim and not of tourists in this world to be agents and ministers of hope amidst the challenges and crises of our time. The Jubilee year and the renewal of the face of our land. It is in the light of our journey towards a year of integral restoration that as consecrated persons in Ghana, we reiterate our new year message to engage all stakeholders and all persons interested in the future of our country and that of our children in a crusade to restore our damaged environment, our polluted water bodies, and our destroyed forests. While we thank the government for its effort against illegal miners, we as consecrated men and women under the cry of the psalmist, send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Psalm 104, verse 30. We are planning a series of activities throughout the year to cry out as loud as we can that the suicidal path of indiscriminate mining and environmental indif indifference we have taken in our quest for instant riches are leading us only to a collective catastrophe. We are sitting on a time bomb, and if, and it is time to say enough is enough. Let's use our God-given rationality to create sustainable wealth and not succumb to our human greed, which only destroys and kills our conscience and our humanity. For what do you profit to gain? What, for what do you profit to gain the whole world and to lose your humanity and your soul? We shall be launching this crusade to renew the face of our land next month when we shall outline in details the various activities we plan to undertake. We call on like-minded persons and groups, all the Catholic faithful, the Christian and Muslim confraternities, CSOs, professional bodies, institutions, traditional and political leaders, the media and all concerned Ghanaians who want to be citizens to join us on this pilgrimage of restoration of our land. 
Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of our land. The renewal we seek also goes to the moral fabric of our society. Today, in the face of so much deceit, peddling of blatant falsehood, legitimization of corruption at all levels as a new norm, a growing anansi mentality to trick, cheat, dupe, and kill others for selfish material gains, one begins to wonder what happened to our Ghana, to the star of Africa, the pace setter, the champion of, uh, the champion of African emancipation and African excellence. Where is a Ghanaian personality revered and celebrated across Africa and, acro and across the globe through our forebears like Osajifo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and Busumuru Kofi Annan. Together, we can write a new page in our ethical history as a people. Together, we cry, send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of our land. The Jubilee year and the 2024 elections. In our New Year message early this year, we underlined the fact that election 2024 is a crucial election that may make or mar Ghana and our democratic credentials. We congratulate the Electoral Commission on reaching a peaceful resolution with all the political parties on the timetable towards the elections. Even as we pray for peaceful, free, and fair elections, we want to reiterate the cause of the Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference for all stakeholders to play by the rules. It is the sovereign right of the people of Ghana to decide who should govern them, and no one should do anything that will thwart or distort this right of the people. We singled out for special mention violence before, during, and after the elections. No one must lose his or her life in the exercise of his or her constitutional right to vote and to determine who governs him or her. And every vote must count and be counted. For this, we call on the security agents, party officials, the media, the Peace Council, and the elect Electoral Commission to do all in their power and prevent any actions or inactions that have the potential of creating violence. To the citizens and to voters, any person or group of persons that is prepared to kill in the pursuit of power can neither be trusted nor be entrusted with power. We condemn in equal terms the phenomenon of vote buying because it is the selling of your integrity as a citizen. The Jubilee year is a year of restoration. Let your vote be your power in this journey. Together we cry out, send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of our land. The enduring issue of land litigation. As consecrated persons, we are engaged in social development in the various places we live and work. For these developmental purposes, we have need of land. Nowadays, it is becoming extremely difficult for us to undertake development projects due to unending land litigations and insecurity of land tenure. The issue of 
multiple sales of the same land to several persons is hampering our development work and discouraging many from embarking on projects which otherwise will be beneficial to the community. We want to urge the authorities and the chiefs that a lasting solution to the land tenure problem be found for rapid development and investment in projects that will benefit the communities. The proper human sexual rights and family value, values bill. As consecrated persons, we add our voices to that of the Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference and other bodies in urging the president to sign the recently passed proper human sexual rights and family values bill into law. While respecting the constitutional rights of all citizens and all those who live and visit Ghana to freedom of choice and association and to their privacy, issues of public ethics and morality, especially in what touches the family, have always occupied special place in common legislation. The family, derived from the sexual partnership of male and female, is the bedrock and foundation of any society and should be protected and promoted. We therefore add our voice to the numerous calls for the government to sign the bill into law. A call to be reconciled. This season of Lent, when we are all invited to be reconciled to God, offers us a great opportunity to start anew as we journey to renew the face of our land. As we endeavor to reconcile to God and with one another, let us also seek to be reconciled with our land, our environment, and creation. In the words of the Apostle Paul, as creation groans and awaits eagerly for its liberation from decay, let us also work towards our liberation from corruption and environmental indifference, so as to experience the glorious future of our manifestation as true sons and daughters of God. Acknowledgement. We acknowledge with profound gratitude the presence and input of the Metropolitan Archbishop of Accra, Most Reverend John Bonaventure Kofi, CSSP, the Bishop of Donkokrom, Most Reverend John Alphonse Asedu, SVD, and Episcopal, uh, Episcopal Chair of Religious, and all our resource persons. We thank the management and staff of Anodiansi Spirituality Center for their hospitality and great sense of service. May our mother, Mary, the model of consecrated life, be our companion in this season of Lent and on our journey to restore and renew the face of our land in readiness for the Jubilee celebration 2025. Giving at in Botiano Hills at the Anoyansin Spirituality Center on this day, 15th of March, in the year of our Lord, 2024. Thank you very much, and may God bless us all and bless our homeland, Ghana. Thank you.